Hi, welcome back to GearJinx TV and a new video. Today we're going to take a look at the Mastering the Mix Exposed 2 software. I must say I'm a fan of the Mastering the Mix uh, plugins. I first discovered their software when I was looking for something that uh, uh, could check phase issues in my mixes and I found levels. Uh, which does that and much more. Uh, in fact, you should check that out on their website. Um, by the way, if you uh, want to stay informed about all our videos, you can uh, subscribe to our channel. Just click on the subscribe button below the video. And if you can hit the bell button to, uh, to get notifications when there's something new on our channel. So why this video? Well, after recording uh, with all your beloved gear and mixing and arranging it into a great track, you want to finish it properly, right? So for that, uh, tools for comparison and analysis are very handy. And Mastering the Mix uh, makes software that does that very well. I found that their software is easy to use and uh, gives insights quickly, makes you learn a lot uh, along the way. Um, in fact, Tom Frampton, the audio engineer behind the software, um, has a great way of explaining how this works and why. And he also has a lot of additional tutorials on his website and in his uh, blog. So uh, you should uh, check that out. So Expose 2. This is a redesigned uh, version of the uh, original uh, software. Um, it, its purpose is to, to give you information about your master tracks, how they compare to other songs and how they will sound on the various digital streaming and download platforms. It's a standalone application that uh, works on Mac and Windows and um, it consists of uh, uh, a lot of different sections. So um, let's go over them quickly. Expose 2. Um, it's a like I said, a redesigned version of the, the first Expose uh, software. And uh, what you do is you load your track in it and then it starts analyzing. So we'll um, start with that. Um, you can use the, the drop function or use browse files. I will select the file that I want to check out today and it will load it. Now, as I said, um, Mastering the Mix has an excellent tutorial on their website that uh, describes very detailed how uh, everything works. Um, so we won't go into too many details here. I will just show you uh, with, uh, with this file how quickly uh, you can analyze it properly and how useful this uh, program can be in your, your daily work routine. So what do we have here? We have four sections, uh, loudness, peak, uh, stereo and dynamic, and each of them gives you uh, information about how the track behaves. So you can um, select uh, a preset here, for instance, you want to check if your uh, mix was done uh, balanced, or if you wanted to create a very dynamic, loud or punchy mix, you can use other presets, you can use mastering presets. I'll just select mastering. Uh, now, in fact, I will choose mixing balanced because I just mixed this track. It's not mastered yet, but I want to know what I'm looking at. So let's see. Um, we check the first section, which is red, which means there, there are various indicators that uh, something should uh, be done to this track. Um, same goes for this section, the peak section. The stereo field is actually okay, so you can see here that it's balanced between left and right and uh, there's uh, nothing wrong with the phasing. And then there is the loudness section and that says that there are some overall dynamics that could be improved actually. Um, okay. Then uh, what you can do is, if you select one of these and you press the little F button, um, Expose will give you information about what you could change to this track to make it sound better. So in this case, um, you could do something with the uh, loudness of your mix. Um, there's something in the peak you can change. And finally, um, it says that parts of your audio are too compressed for this preset. So you could um, change the presets actually and see 
if that uh, makes any difference, if you would say, okay, this track is already mastered and um, I'm planning to uh, uh, stream it on Spotify eventually, you can see what you have to do for that to, uh, to make it sound properly on the platform. Um, then below here, we have the uh, EQ analysis, analysis. So if I go to this track, I can see how it behaves as opposed to uh, a general master. So the lines below the zero indicate that the uh, previously components of uh, this track are actually below the, um, the normal value for this, this kind of mastering. Uh, and that's generally true for most of this uh, track. Now, um, I'll let you listen to some, a small example of what this track sounds like. So it is kind of a dubby track, which um, is not um, something that is, I think, very common in mastering. So you can choose a different kind of um, mastering uh, reference. For instance, I could choose from electronic, could choose dance or dubstep. And then you can see that it, the behavior is quite different. But um, what you also can do is you can uh, select a, a track that you want to reference it to. So if I um, do that, and, um, for instance, I would say I like this uh, master track a lot that's in the same range uh, of music that uh, I'm mastering my track in. I can just open that and it starts analyzing it. So it's now complete. And if I uh, select it from reference track here, then you can see the, how my track behaves as opposed to the reference track that I just uh, loaded. And this also gives you indicators about what you can change to your track. And there's another possibility. You can um, add files here. Uh, for instance, I would uh, say, okay, here's another track that I like, uh, which is already mastered. So I'll uh, just load that in. So here we can see that this track, um, some sections are also red, uh, so that means that opposed to general mastering, there are some things that could have been changed, but this is already a master track. And if I look below here, I can see both of them. So I can see how my track, that's this one, behaves as opposed to this one. And as you can see, when I hover over the, the two, I can see how the curves relate to each other. So, and then you can see that there are not too much um, there's not, yeah, there's some difference here around the 100 hertz. And there's some um, uh, um, difference here in the, the top level of the frequency spectrum. So I could work on that and see if I can get a closer match to uh, the original that I like. Um, if you want to compare them by audio, I will play some sections. <laughs> And as you can hear, the levels are a bit different. So I could um, choose loudness match here. And this will um, match the two tracks in loudness to each other. So it's easier to hear what the differences are. And again, I can uh, choose the different sections here to see what uh, my options are. For instance, if I uh, look at the dynamic section, it will, yeah, it still says that there could be improvement here and uh, some loudness uh, improvements as well. So if you look at uh, the general idea around this, uh, then you can see that um, it's really easy to load your track in and to um, analyze it and to find out what you could do to improve your track. And this is actually very learnful because if you uh, sort of know what the general things that are that lacking in your mix, then this could have various reasons. 
for instance, your monitoring could be so set up so that you can't hear everything, um, which is, happens in a lot of rooms, of course. Then you know what to do the next time. And in this case, I would say, um, if you look at these differences, uh, there's a general area around 100 hertz that uh, needs some attention. This probably has something to do with the dynamics as well. So if you would tighten that up a little bit, work on the base, maybe separate the base more in the in different sections, then uh, this could be uh, uh, much more improved. And the same goes for the top end, um, which uh, sounds a bit dull in the track, so that, that could have, uh, yeah, maybe a different mix could, could work uh, quite well on that. Finally, I want to show you that not only uh, can you compare it to, to your own reference track, but uh, there's also a, a number of interesting uh, presets here. So you could uh, choose all kinds of genres here. Um, and uh, each genre has a lot of options. So if I would introduce, uh, sorry, if I would produce a, like a, a more pop uh, music track, then I can change the reference level here. And then I can see that's actually a closer a closer match. Um, well, there you go. And also, uh, I forgot to tell you, you can uh, view the side, mid and stereo section separately, which uh, can be helpful, especially in the low end where the, the, the stereo field is very important uh, not to mess up. Um, for instance, if you would press vinyl, this section is really important uh, to look at. So this um, also helps you uh, in this area to get the best uh, mix result uh, possible. If you're happy, you can uh, uh, save your session. You can also uh, save a, a preset. So if you think you will gonna use this analysis track more often, you can save it here. And uh, that's about it. So what do we think about Expose? I must say it's, it's a very well-made application that's uh, easy to use and gives you a lot of information about your tracks. And in addition, it also gives an easy insight into uh, possible changes you could make to improve the result. It has a great uh, user interface with uh, drag and drop uh, options and clear sections that are easy to reach. And the color coding of the waveform layout is uh, as simple as it is uh, effective and makes it easy to see where changes uh, can be needed. Finally, you learn a lot about your mix and mastering while using it too. So I recommend to try it on some of your tracks and uh, experience how it helps you. That's it for today. I hope you uh, liked the video and if you did, please give us a thumbs up and don't forget to uh, subscribe to our, our channel. Uh, we'll see you next time.